All right, so this video here, these are two U18 AAA female goalies. The reason I chose these two here is that they're both um, very cerebral goaltenders. So if I ask them to do something new, they're, they're usually pretty game to trying things out. So we're looking at the Panda Post Lock. Neither of these goalies have ever done a Panda Post Lock before. So I decided to break the Panda Post Lock into three different uh, sections that kind of help them develop their understanding of how to use it, when to use it, and also how to get out of it. So the red line marking on the ice was trying to simulate that transition point. So you saw it earlier with the um, with the pro goalies with the sticks. So I just wanted a, a this definitive marker for the goalies to see, right? This over here, we have what would be kind of getting into zone three and then getting down into here, we have zone two, right? And then we would have this kind of coming across over here. Now we're down in the zone one. Right, so I wanted these goalies to kind of see the markings on the ice and understand the different uh, trigger points or spots, markers on the ice for where they should be in relation to where the puck carrier is. So the first part of the drill was just getting them used to being in the overlap but drifting back so that their short side hip was kind of coming right up against the post. So again, bear in mind, a lot of the reps here aren't going to be the perfect Panda post lock. If you're looking for perfect execution of the Panda, you're gonna to wanna to go and check out the videos that I have either with the pro goalies or with either Dustin Wolf or Thomas Millich who have a lot more experience uh, with the Panda post lock. What we want to see here in these practice reps is just the goalies going through developmentally the stages of learning how to implement the Panda Post Lock. And then again, it might be something to look at with regards to the women's game. So both Dustin Wolf and Thomas Millich are big fans of the Panda Post Lock. They're both around the six-foot mark. Generally speaking, a lot of the, the women's goalies are going to be under that six-foot mark. Now, there obviously are some women's goalies that are uh, over the six foot mark, but as, as we're probably aware, they're, they're a little bit more f fewer and further between. As far as I know, uh, Anna, Anna Marie uh, Debian and, and Renee Debian, pardon me, is um, Canada's top goalie. And although she looks bigger um, comparable to her teammates, she's around the 5'9, five, 5'10 five, mark, from what I understand. So we're seeing here the goalie is kind of getting caught into. So as the player would kind of come around and cross into that zone two, start driving down, sliding into zone one, I'm wanting that goalie to push back a little bit further. So here this goalie is getting caught out a little bit too far, right? And they're forgetting about sliding back into the post. So the tough part is here, is that the goalies, if they get too focused on making the save, which is obviously a big part of um, what we're wanting them to do, then they're, they're going to miss the development piece of learning how to implement the new save selection or at least getting an understanding of how and when to use it and if they want to add it into their game a little bit later. So I just wanted to point out here, again, this one here as they're going through and they're learning, not the perfect rep here but all part of the learning process and things to look for as you're starting to implement this in your practice. All right, so there is a good one there. Obviously, the goalie was focused on getting her hit back into the post, but then shooter is able to come in, shoot up top. So we want to make sure, just like the traditional RVH, which is kind of funny to say, we want to make sure we're looking for the contact point. So we have the pad down on the ice. We want the hip in uh, on the pulse, but we also want the shoulder coming in 
If the shoulder comes in, then that's going to push the head kind of into this space here. And then this shot isn't going to be able to beat us up top because our shoulder is going to be there taking that time and space away. So you can see here the goalie went into more of an active butterfly. So this is where kind of the problem lies there. Right. So based on where the shooter came down to. So the shot release. Right. Shot release right here, right at the bottom of the circle. So we're right at the cusp of that zone one. Right, so this is relatively a purely blocking save uh, or purely blocking situation. Okay, so just the way mechanically everything's set up, the shooter's proximity than that, right, right on the edge of that circle, right close and tight here. Right, goalie can go down into a blocking save, and then the, again, the best part of this overlap kind of rvh the panda post lock is that if you're looking at the goalie right now there's no holes here on this short side right so if she were to just drop straight down here and eliminate all those holes right just eliminate the holes along the ice there's no way this puck's going to beat her over the shoulder but as the play develops you're going to watch her drift a little bit here right drifting down activating the glove a little bit of a shoulder rotation Right, her chest isn't square to the puck or squaring to the puck, so then it leaves that gap open, lets the shooter go up. All right, nice save. Okay, they're good first wrap. All right, again, this goalie here is a little bit bigger. Uh, not a whole lot for the shooter to shoot at here, especially above the shoulder, right? So we're looking at as that goalie's dropping in, right? So now she's in position, gets wide and low as the player gets into that tight spot, right? Now she's going to be able to rotate up from there. So here, this is what we're trying to avoid is that kind of exaggerated post entry so you're going to see her hips shift away from the post where her hips right now should be on the post hips shift away from the post and then she's trying to come in right shift into the puck so right now the shooter is shooting the goalie knows that no problem here she's able to get down makes an excellent save kills the rebound no problem but if we're looking at developing into the Panda Post Lock or, or just kind of implementing just different save selections going into our game, we don't want to see the goalies, whether they're, they're using the overlap, they're using the Panda, they're using the RVH, we don't want to see that shift away from the post, right, giving up that short side. Right, nice save, and then again she is able to rotate. Okay, so save, tracking, pucks fully behind, able to rotate around. I'd want her to get that lead shoulder blocker. I'd want her to get that around a little bit quicker before she starts to move. Right, but able to come across no problem. Right, so still working out some of the kinks, getting back to the backside post there. Right, but as as again as we're going through, when she rotates, you're gonna watch her short side shoulder kind of come up, and then she, right now, not really in a balanced position because with this hand coming back here, that's gonna be pulling her away from where she wants to be going. So that's what's gonna stop that rotation. So if we're looking at this and we just want to look at it, well, well, she couldn't rotate to get to the backside post. True, on this specific play, as we look deeper, it's the mechanics, right? So before we cut up the drill, we want to look at the bigger picture, what's going on, what's the situation, and what's going to benefit the goalie the most. Again, both of these goalies, it's their first time doing the Panda Post Lock, and we're working on first making the save in the overlap, 
and then now making the save in the overlap and then being able to transition post to post. So they're learning their rotational keys, body coordination, balance coming off from this newer position. I'm thinking they're doing an excellent job, but definitely open the feedback. And then just quickly there, we didn't keep it in the film, but the goalie's going to shift right from the panda, and she's going to be looking to shift right into the RVH. Yeah, working on rotations. Right? So as we're getting across here, so we're making the save on the short side. Right? We got our eyes down watching the puck. Now, as that puck starts to move across and behind, we want those eyes down, but now we want them coming through, and we want them looking through our blocker side elbow. That's going to keep your eyes on a good trajectory down low. That's going to allow your blocker here right, to rotate back, staying nice and tight, and that's also going to help us bring our glove over with us so it's not trailing behind. So this last one here, as we're getting the goalies kind of used to the second piece, so the drift, the butterfly, and the rotation. Here the goalie's going to leave a little bit early. All right, so she's starting to leave, right, and this player realistically has all kinds of daylight here on that short side. So we want to work with the goalies to hold the ground to understand that it's not a panic move back to that backside post, that backside push. The goalie's have the ability to get there. They've been making this push, you know, for these U18 goalies their whole life. So it's most important that they understand the technique and the situation, identify cues, then be able to make that rotation back. Try to take some of the panic out of the game. So when this happens in the game, in the actual game setting, the goalie doesn't have the panic and can trust their ability to transition to that backdoor position.